good morning class 12 so uh, in the previous class i discussed uh, the topic externality with you and i told you what is uh, positive and negative externality today we'll be discussing cost benefit analysis which is another very important isc question so i will try, try to take a very simple example in order to explain this particular concept to you what is cost benefit analysis okay it's a very broad concept that the governments of countries are uh, trying to uh, undertake so that the environment is totally protected from the damages of big projects right so on page number 127 cost ben uh, cost benefit analysis either you are asked the different steps of cost benefit analysis or sometimes you are asked the advantage and disadvantage of this particular system. So before we understand the steps, I will try to take a simple example of a project. Uh, like earlier, when uh, people wanted to undertake, undertake some project in the environment, say uh, industry was to be constructed or uh, there were roads or flyovers or very big hotels where definitely there was damage of environment involved, uh, very strict rules did not exist. So the project promoters, what the people who planned the project, the project promoters could just undertake the project and they could carry it out without uh, permission of the government. But now, since there has been irreversible damages in the environment, all the project promoters have to undergo this system, which is called cost benefit analysis. Now suppose we take an example, say project promoters have planned the construction of some huge industry, right? That industry, as we know, will definitely bring profits to the society, to the consumers, it will bring profit. But at the same time, we need to understand that that particular industry may also contaminate the air, it may contaminate the land, it may contaminate the water bodies in its particular surrounding. So the project promoters have to undergo certain steps to ensure what this cost benefit analysis mean is, we are trying to ensure that the benefits that we incur because of the project are higher than the cost that is involved. Like for example, suppose there are project promoters who are planning an industry, they will have to submit a project to the government where they will specify the place of construction, the benefits that they are bringing to the environment and to the consumers because of their project, how the country's GDP is going to benefit because of that particular project. All the benefits are listed by the project promoter and along with that, what they also have to do is they have to write the negative effects of their projects very, very clearly. What negative effect their project might bring? Because if it is the construction of an industry, they have to mention that that particular area, how that particular area will be damaged, what kind of air pollution will be there, and if there is air pollution, what technologies have they adopted to overcome that particular air pollution problem, right? So if there is a water body near that particular system, whether the water body will be contaminated, how will aquatic life be affected, and what measures are the project promoters undertaking to ensure that they prevent that particular pollution. So what we are trying to understand here is that they will write down all the costs involved. That means not only monetary cost, but they will also write how damages to the environment will be there because of their particular project and they will also list down their benefits. So ultimately, this please remember, this is all in paper and not in practicality, right? The industry has not even come up, but the project promoters will submit this particular report to the government, to the Ministry of Environment and Forest. And what will happen is, now two things, two probabilities are there. There is the cost 
and there is the benefit, right? If after scanning the particular project, the government will scan the particular project, even before it is it has come into the environment, it will be properly scanned by a team of people. And if we find out that the damages to the environment are much higher than the benefit the project is going to bring to the environment and to the people, the project will definitely be cancelled. But on the other way, if the government feels that the benefits because of the project are higher than the damages to the environment, only then the project will be passed. And once the project is passed by the government, then only the project promoters will start the construction of that particular industry. So in totality, when we try to understand this particular topic, what this cost benefits, uh, benefit analysis is trying to do is, we are trying to protect the environment from the damages of harmful projects. We are trying to see that harmful projects which damage the environment, they do not come up because the kind of damages that we have already done to the environment, irreversible damages and people are suffering because of that. We do not want that to get repeated. That is why now we have a very, very lengthy process where the project promoters will send their list of projects to the environment. If the benefits are higher, then the government passes the project. If the damages are higher to the environment, then the project is cancelled and the project promoters cannot carry out the project, right? So, uh, what are the steps of cost-benefit analysis? What do the people do, the project promoters do? In step one, what they write is, they write the significant cost and benefits of the project. What is the cost, monetary cost, as well as the environmental cost? They are mentioned. And what benefit is my project bringing to the environment? That is mentioned in step one, right? Then in step two, what options? What are the options that we have? undertaken? What are the processes? What are the things that we are trying to do? And when I choose those options, what will be the consequence on the environment? That also, as a project promoter, I need to clearly state. So I will write down my options that I have chosen and I'll, I will also give the consequence of each option that I have opted for, right? Then in uh, step three, uh, what is the outcome of the consequence? The probability of each outcome. Is it, and in the next step, uh, you will write the whether it is a positive outcome or whether it is a negative outcome. And then in step four, we try to write the expected time period. What time frame will be required to make the project a success, a reality? That time period, it may be one year, it may be two years, it may be five years, that expected time period is also notified to the government. Uh, then we try to under, we give a value to each of the consequence, we give a value, whether it is a positive value or a negative value. And then the last step is step six, where the, uh, what the government does is the maximum, if there are maximum benefits because of the project, then only the project is passed by the government. So when we do all these steps and each and every step is uh, properly uh, written on paper and then given to the government, the government gets a proper chance to scan the particular project and understand is the cost higher or is the benefit higher. And this entire thing is done just keeping in mind one uh, uh, thing that is to uh, not to damage the environment further from uh, big projects, right? So this is an idea on cost-benefit analysis. Uh, everything comes with pros and cons, I have told you. There are advantages of carrying out this particular system. There are disadvantages of carrying out this particular system. So you please try to understand first what is uh, CBA. In your question, you will get it as CBA cost-benefit analysis. It comes as CBA. Uh, in the next lecture, I will tell you about the advantages and disadvantages of this particular system.
Thank you, class.